Uh, today's presentation, uh, I should mention to, to uh, Dr. Kester, is the fourth award of non-formula cure funding in recent years to the Penn State College of Medicine. Totals more than $12 million and supplements the roughly $70 million in formula funding received since the cure program inception to support advanced biomedical research right here in central Pennsylvania. These uh, investments in health science at Penn State yield significant impact both on the Commonwealth uh, as a whole and on our local economy. For the past decade, for example, formula and non-formula funds have supported over 100 scientists and research technicians at Penn State Hershey, generating over $174 million in business activity for our regional economy. Looked at um, in uh, one way, the way we research accounts look at it, the return on investment for these funds are between four and seven to one uh, over the years. The little dirty secret is chemotherapeutics, the drugs, are stupid. They only go after proliferating cells. That's your cancer, but that's also your hair, your gut, your white blood cells. Those are all your side effects. We really don't have medications that go after the mutated proteins that are driving only the cancer. Everybody talks about personalized medicine. Here at the Penn State College of Medicine, we actually now have an institute of personalized medicine. And we're gonna look at all your genes, especially the genes that are driving your cancer, your inflammatory disease, your cardiovascular event. And we're gonna take that information and use it. And one of the ways we're gonna use it is we're gonna look at what mutated genes you'll have, and hopefully we'll design medications that will only attack the mutated proteins the proteins that are driving your cancer. And with personalized medicine, we will be able to say, these are the mutated proteins we want to attack with drugs. The problem is, we don't have many drugs that truly attack mutated proteins and only attack the mutated proteins. One of the ways to go after these mutated proteins is using something called siRNA. It's basically it's a little piece of RNA that stops the production of mutated proteins. It may be the way we prescribed drugs in the next five to 10 years and truly t attack only the growing mutated proteins that drive a cancer. The problem is these sRNAs are very toxic, they're immunogenic, and they will never be drugs. So how do you actually give something that is toxic to a human body? One of the ways is to encapsulate it within nanotechnology. And what we're doing is we are going after a specific mutated protein that's overexpressed in a great number of women who have breast cancer. It's, PI, it's called PI3 kinase CA. It's a mutated protein that drives the cancer and drives this type of breast cancer. We can encapsulate the sRNA directed to this mutated protein, this PI3 kinase CA, in the nanojacket, and it seems to work. We call it a nanojacket. Actually, Nature Medicine called it a nanojacket because they said these technologies were dressed to kill. And we thought that was cool, so we trademarked that. <laughs> and I want to really also say that this is an academic industrial partnership. The ideas come from my lab, but also from Dr. Jim Adair's lab, uh, who's up at University Park. Dr. Jim Adair, who's a professor in the College of Engineering, and myself, co-founded the company six years ago. We call it Keystone Nano. We bring in Jeff Davidson as our CEO, and we work with Keystone Nano in lockstep. So it's truly an academic industrial partnership. I'm going to do a lot of the assays to see how our drug works. Jim Adair is going to do a lot of the nanotechnology to better encapsulate the sRNA within the nano um, jacket. And Keystone Nano, the company, is going to do the scale up, manufacturing this at scale and helping us do with contract research organizations to complete the preclinical package that will get us in front of the FDA with an IND in a year and a half. That's what we're using your money for, and we hope to leverage it well beyond three to one, four to one because I believe truly nanotechnology offers the ability to see the promise of personalized medicine and to attract, attack specific cancers and only those cancers.